Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the citric acid cycle. Okay, so we've currently got to isocitrate, and we want to see what's going to happen to isocitrate next. Okay, so what's going to happen is that it's going to be acted upon by an enzyme known as isocitrate dehydrogenase. So let's just copy out the structure of isocitrate again. So remember, isocitrate is this six carbon molecule. Okay, where well we have these three carboxylic acid groups. So five of them are in a line like this. Well, five of the carbons are in a line like this. And you have carboxylic acid groups at either end. And then the third carboxylic acid group comes off the third carbon here. Okay, like so. And then we also have an alcohol group coming off this carbon here. And then hydrogens will saturate every other bond that we have. Okay, so... This is the molecule isocitrate. Now, what's going to happen is this is going to be acted upon by an enzyme known as isocitrate dehydrogenase, which is going to turn this into alpha-ketoglutarate. Okay, so, again, I'm going to show you a logical understanding of how this reaction makes sense. I'm not going to show you an electronic flow diagram. Okay, so... What's going to happen is we're going to convert it. I will draw what we're going to convert it into firstly, and then I'll show you how it makes sense. So, basically, what we're going to end up with is a five-carbon molecule now. So we're going to lose a carbon, which means we're going to produce a carbon dioxide molecule in this um, reaction. Okay, And this molecule is going to be called alpha-ketoglutarate. Now, glutarate, or glutaric acid, is uh, the name given to a 5-carbon carboxylic acid molecule where you've got carboxylic acid groups at either end, and all of the carbons in between would then be saturated with hydrogens coming off them. Alpha-ketoglutarate means that we're going to have a keto group coming off one of these carbons. And which carbon is it? It's going to be the alpha carbon. Now, traditionally, alpha used to be the name for a carbon straight after a carboxylic acid group. So we'll pick this one, but of course we could have picked this one, but we'll pick this one anyway. Okay, so we'll put a keto group there. Uh, so that's the keto sorted. And then all the other carbons can just have hydrogens coming off them to saturate them. So this, then, is the structure of alpha-ketoglutarate. We've got glutaric acid with a keto group off the alpha carbon here. OK, right. Uh, so um, the reaction uh, is catalyzed by an enzyme called isocitrate dehydrogenase. So this is catalyzed by isocitrate dehydrogenase. OK. And to do this reaction, firstly, you're going to produce a molecule of um, carbon dioxide from this carboxylic acid group that we've lost up here. But you're also going to uh, reduce a molecule of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So let's talk through what we're going to do. Basically, uh, what you can imagine doing is breaking the bond between this carbon and this carbon of the carboxylic acid group here and send one electron back to each of them. Then imagine also breaking the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen of the alcohol group of the carboxylic acid group up there. And again, imagine sending one electron back to the oxygen and one back to the hydrogen. Then use the free electron on the oxygen to bind with the free electron on the carbon to create a molecule of carbon dioxide then. Then bind this hydrogen, which has a free electron, to this carbon, which has a free electron, here to create this methylene group that we see here. Then all we need to do is handle the conversion of this uh, carbon with an alcohol group and a hydrogen off it into a keto group here. Okay, now what you can imagine doing is breaking the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen here, sending one electron back to the oxygen and one back to the hydrogen. Then break the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen here, send one electron back to the carbon, one back to the hydrogen. Bind this carbon atom to this oxygen atom with another bond, um, because this carbon has a free electron from the breaking of this bond, and this oxygen has a free electron from the breaking of this bond. Therefore, this will be taken into a double bond, which is at what we see over here. Then we'll have two hydrogen atoms 
free. And remember, these won't just be protons. These will be protons with electrons, basically. You can use nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide to mop up those protons. So we'll bring in a molecule of oxidized NAD. It will take off those two protons, and it will become a molecule of reduced NAD. So we've generated another molecule of reduced NAD. OK, so uh, next up, we're also going to do another reaction. And this is going to be what's known as, uh, well, it's going to be catalyzed by uh, an enzyme called alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. So we've just done isocitrate dehydrogenase. Now we're going to do alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. OK, and again, this is a one-way reaction. OK, so alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. OK, so basically, we're going to get rid of another carbon atom, basically. So we're going to produce another molecule of carbon dioxide. OK, we're also going to bring in a molecule of coenzyme A. And what we're going to overall generate is a molecule called succinyl coenzyme A. So the product of this reaction, I'll draw the product first, and then I'll tell you about how the reaction makes sense. So the product is going to be a molecule known as succinyl-CoA. Now, succinic acid or succinate is a molecule we will see later. It's the name for a four-carbon carboxylic acid molecule where you have carboxylic acid groups at both ends. Okay, so let me show this. So, a four-carbon molecule where you have carboxylic acid groups at both ends, that's what succinic acid or succinate is. So if you were to now put an alcohol group there, that would be succinate or succinic acid. Uh, we are, however, going to link it to coenzyme A, basically, like so. OK, via uh, this bioester link. And I never actually discussed this, uh, but basically, we discussed how thiol groups were similar to alcohol groups. And in fact, they can react with carboxylic acid groups in exactly the same way as an alcohol group would react with a carboxylic acid group, like so, to form what is very similar to an ester link. However, instead of being called an ester link, it's called a thioester link. OK, so you've got succinic acid, effectively, linked via a thioester link uh, to uh, the coenzyme A molecule. OK, right. Uh, so, firstly, you're going to have to bring in a molecule of coenzyme A to do this. So here comes the molecule of coenzyme A. OK. Um, and basically, to make sense of this reaction, what are we doing here? Well, we're going to break this bond here between those two carbons. So give one electron back to this carbon, give one electron back to this carbon. Then break the bond between the sulfur and the hydrogen atom in the coenzyme A molecule. Give one electron back to the sulfur, one back to the hydrogen. Bind the free electron of the sulfur atom to this free electron of the carbon atom, and you'll get succinyl coenzyme A. Now, we have to sort out the mess now. So we're going to make a molecule of carbon dioxide. So what we're going to do is break apart the oxygen and the hydrogen right over there, and I'll bring this down a bit. So break those two apart, give one electron to the oxygen, one back to the hydrogen, then bind the free electron of the oxygen with the free electron of this carbon to create a carbon dioxide molecule. OK, so this reaction will also yield carbon dioxide, just like isocitrate dehydrogenase produced carbon dioxide. Alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase will also produce carbon dioxide. Now, we still haven't mopped up everything. Again, we have a hydrogen atom here, because this was a proton with the electron. We said, imagine giving the electron back to the hydrogen. And again, here, we imagined giving the electron back to the hydrogen. So we still have two hydrogen atoms. And of course, we'll mop those up with uh, a molecule of NAD. So we'll bring in oxidized nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, and we'll produce reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. OK, so that takes us now to uh, succinyl coenzyme A. So we've now lost all of the carbons. Remember, we brought in acetyl coenzyme A. That's what we added in. OK, and we are hoping to regenerate oxaloacetate, which was a four-carbon molecule, remember. OK, so we've 
given off all of the carbon that we can afford to give off, basically. Now it's just going to be about modifying this succinyl coenzyme A uh, so that we can get it back into oxaloacetate. Okay, so the carbon dioxide that we have now produced is all the carbon dioxide we're going to produce. We are, however, going to produce a few more molecules of NAD uh, that are reduced. Okay, and also some other um, different molecules which can do effectively the same thing. Okay, right. Uh, so uh, the next reaction is going to be catalyzed by an enzyme known as succinyl uh, CoA synthetase. And this is actually going to be a reversible reaction. So all of the reactions from now on are going to be reversible. Okay, so it can go forwards and backwards and it will be catalyzed by the same enzyme. Okay, so this enzyme is succinyl uh, CoA synthetase. And it's actually named for the reverse reaction, for catalyzing the reverse reaction, the synthesis of succinyl coenzyme A. We're actually going to see the breaking apart of coenzyme A. We're going to see coenzyme, sorry, succinyl coenzyme A returned to succinic acid or succinate. So, as I said previously, succinate is this four carbon molecule where you have these two carboxylic acid groups, one at either end, like so and then uh, hydrogens off these intermediate carbons here. Okay, so this is succinate, or you could call this succinic acid. Uh, what I've drawn more correctly should be called succinic acid, but as I've explained laboriously already, uh, people use them interchangeably. Okay, right. Uh, so, basically what we need in order to split off this coenzyme A molecule from the succinate is we need water, we need a water molecule to come in here. Now it's actually cleverer than that, you don't just bring in water unfortunately, it's slightly more subtle. What you bring in is a molecule of guanosine diphosphate, okay, GDP, and you also bring in a molecule of inorganic phosphate, and then you combine them together to make GTP. Now usually when you do this, when you combine guanosine diphosphate with an inorganic phosphate to create guanosine triphosphate, usually that reaction produces water. It's a condensation reaction. Okay, That water that you produce will then be used to split the succinyl coenzyme A molecule apart uh, into succinic acid and the coenzyme A, basically. So, you're going to use the condensation of guanosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate to hydrolyze succinyl coenzyme A into succinic acid and coenzyme A. Now, guanosine triphosphate is very similar to adenosine triphosphate. It's just got a different organic base, basically. So, if we just remind ourselves uh, with a little cartoon of the structure of guanosine triphosphate, basically, you have a ribose sugar bound to guanine, the organic base guanine, okay? Um, so, um, guanosine is the name for guanine, the organic base guanine bound to ribose, just as adenosine is the name for adenine bound to ribose, okay? So, then if we want guanosine triphosphate, what we need is three phosphate groups stuck off uh, this fifth carbon up here, so you'll have three phosphate groups like so, and this will be guanosine triphosphate, or GTP. So basically, when we take guanosine diphosphate, that's the same thing, but with only two phosphate groups. We're going to bring in a third, we're going to bind them together, and when you do that, it produces water as a product, okay? And we're going to use that water then to um, break the succinyl coenzyme A down into succinate, and coenzyme A. Okay, right, and this reaction is reversible, but it's producing an energy source, basically. Guanosine triphosphate is an energy source. Uh, you can use it similar to ATP. Okay, it's not as famous as ATP because it's not as widely used within the cell, but it is effectively a similar concept. Okay, so uh, the succinate is now going to go further, so it's going to be catalyzed uh, what's well, going to be turned into a molecule known as fumarate, okay? And the enzyme that's going to do this is something called succinate dehydrogenase. 
Now, all of the enzymes that we have seen which have been called a dehydrogenase enzyme, basically they have resulted in the production of two hydrogen atoms which have then been mopped up by the molecule nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And this isn't an exception to that rule, but it is a slight exception because this time the hydrogen atoms that we liberate aren't going to be mopped up by nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, uh, but instead by another molecule which does the similar thing, which is called flavin adenine dinucleotide, or FAD. So I'll write its full name out here at least once. So this is flavin adenine dinucleotide, or for short, FAD. Right. Okay, so what's going to happen is succinate is going to be converted into a molecule known as fumarate. And to do this, imagine taking uh, one, um, breaking one of these bonds. So imagine cutting this bond between this carbon atom and this hydrogen atom here. Okay, and then imagine breaking this bond between this carbon and this hydrogen atom here. And again, imagine giving one electron back to both of the participants. So give one electron to this carbon, one back to this hydrogen, one back to this carbon, one back to this hydrogen. These two carbons now both have free electrons. They can then bind to one another to turn this into a double bond. Okay, so you'll get a carbon, you'll get a double bond between these two carbons here, like so. And this then is the molecule that is called fumarate or fumaric acid. Okay, so this is fumarate. Uh, and basically, what else will you be producing there? Well, you're producing two hydrogen atoms again. These will be mopped up by the flavin adenine dinucleotide. And you will produce what is called reduced flavin adenine dinucleotide. And this is denoted FADH2. And this is why people get confused with NADH. Because flavin adenine dinucleotide... Uh, when it's reduced, is written FADH2. So you actually show that it has two hydrogens associated with it. Whereas NAD, when you have reduced NAD, you don't show both of the hydrogens. You just put one H after it. And that's why people get confused and think, does this mean it's only got one hydrogen atom, whereas FAD has two? Um, no is the answer, basically. They both accept two hydrogens. Okay, so succinate dehydrogenase converts succinate into fumarate. Okay, right. Uh, fumarate is then going to go further on, and we're going to try and turn it back into oxaloacetate. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.